Hi everybody. In today's video we're going to build a complete C Sharp SQL Server Windows Form app in 30 minutes. And we're going to be using datatier.net which is an entity framework alternative that uses all stored procedures. If you want to stick around here's what you're going to need. SQL Server or SQL Server Express is what I'm using because it's free. You'll also need SQL Server Management Studio installed. If you want to run the source code version of datatier.net, you need to use Visual Studio 2019 because it references Visual Studio itself. Or you can run the install version, which I just published a new install about 10 minutes ago, and we're going to test it out. And finally, you're going to need Visual Studio 2022 with Windows Desktop enabled because we're going to build a uh, Windows Form app. All right, here's what we're going to build. We're going to install datatier.net on your machine. We're going to, or you can run the source code version. And we're going to create a SQL Server database named datatier.net.database. We're going to create a SQL Server database named Idea Bank. Because this is going to be a short video for just, if you ever think of an idea, you can just for brainstorming, just write it down and save it. And finally, we're going to build, um, build out our data tier and create our form and then we're going to build the project and execute the store procedures that are code generated and then we're going to build the connection string and set up your environment variable so you can securely connect to the database and then we're going to add a NuGet package data juggler .controls. and then finally we're just going to design the form with an add edit and delete button and I guess a save and a cancel button so you can type in at the the dream description, I mean the idea description. And then finally, yeah, we're going to wire up the buttons for, you know, make all the events save. And that's it. So hopefully we can do all this in 30 minutes. So I'm going to start the timer now, and that's the end of PowerPoint. Well, before we start the timer, though, let me close PowerPoint. We are going to go to datatear.net and uh, get the, the install for it. Here's the uh, repo if you want to down come here and you can clone it just make sure to use Visual Studio 2019 or I'm going to be using the latest release 17 minutes ago hot off the presses go down to the bottom there's a MSI I'm going to save this to my temp folder and I'm going to run it and I'll start the timer for our app as soon as I get uh, datatier.net installed Okay, let me minimize all this, the browser, and just hit install. Okay, now we're going to launch datatear.net. Okay, as the instructions say, we need to create a new database named datatear.net.database. So I'm going to go over to SQL Server Management Studio, new database, datatear.net.database. And then go back over to our little program here and it says check this box. Now it says click here. We're going to execute. And now we've created the datatier.net database. And then there's one more thing we need to do. Um, we can skip step two, but we're going to go on to step three, which is build our connection string and set up the environment variable for the connection string. So let's do that now. I'm going to type in my server name. I'm going to use Windows Authentication. I'm going to leave this checked because it's a .NET 7 project we're going to build. Leave all that alone. Build connection string. Test. And that's been copied to my clipboard. But now I'm going to go ahead and install this as an environment variable. And we are finished. Now it's going to tell us we have to restart datatier.net. So we're going to do that now. So if you look over here, this is what just got installed. This one and this one. I have no idea why in my machine they put them so far apart, but we're going to run this again. Okay, if you get to this point, you have datatier.net set up and you can create your own project, which is what we're going to do now. We're going to call our project Idea Bank. And then the project folder, we need to create our WinForms app for this. So we're going to open up Visual Studio 2022. I'm going to create a new project. 
Okay, before we do this, I'm going to go ahead and start our timer. I am sorry I kind of uh, lapsed on starting the timer, but hopefully we finish with plenty of time. <clears throat> and what I'm going to be selecting is Windows Form App. If you don't have that in your recent list, just type it over here. But I'm going to just go ahead and select that. I am going to call this Idea Bank. And I'll put this project on GitHub later, so I will put it in my GitHub folder and hit next. .NET 7. Okay, so now we're going to come back and build out our form here in a second. But what we're going to do is we want the project folder. So let's just say open folder in File Explorer. I'm going to create a new folder, data. Okay, now I'm going to go back to our project. I'm going to click this uh, refresh or show all files is probably what I want. And I'm going to say copy full path. Okay, that's all we need for now. We'll come back and finish this out here shortly. Let me close Windows Explorer. I'm going to paste that and now it says create data tier in project folder so we're going to create that so I will tell you that if you have any problems with this click the button again because the install version I just added code though to where it tries it twice before it fails so hopefully you don't have any problems but it worked so yay and we're going to go ahead and hit next okay now we're going to add a database and I'm going to type in my server name <coughs> excuse me I'm going to be using Windows Authentication and click the little ellipsis here and this will refresh my database list. And now we need to create a database for IdeaBank. So we're going to go to SQL Server and do that now. New database. I can go ahead and close this red here, sorry. Okay, go back to our little wizard. Oops. Uh, somewhere SQL Server has a little wizard open. There we go. Okay, database name is idea bank and hit OK. Alright, so back in SQL Server Management Studio we have our database. So now if I click this button again to refresh my list, click the ellipsis again, we should see idea bank. We're good. Only thing is we haven't created any tables yet. So we're gonna I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. So let's go back to SQL Server and we're gonna create our one table. So let's go ahead and do that now. Tables, we just show you there's nothing here. New table. First column is ID. It's an int and it does not allow nulls. Set primary key. And we're going to change the identity specification to false. And then the next field is going to, I'm going to just let you give an idea title. And that'll be, um, you can make it kind of big, but you don't want to write a book. Okay, and the title cannot be null, because you got to have a title. It's kind of like the name of the idea. And then you can give it a description. And this will be, we'll go with like 512. You can make it bigger if you want later. Okay, and the only other thing we need is the... Uh, we're going to call it created date. And that's going to be a date time. Okay, and that uh, doesn't need to be null. Okay, and that is, um, I guess the description can be null because you might just want to type the, the title and just save and come back and do a description later. So we'll let that be null. And I can't think of anything else um, needed. So we'll uh, just go with this for now. If you need to add some other fields, come back in here and we can do it later. Okay, and we're going to call this, oops, that just saved the table. That was not supposed to do that. Let me refresh the list. That was a mouse click slip. I'm going to call this, I, hopefully that doesn't like create anything. We'll call it idea, uh, we'll just call it ideas. We'll call it idea. Okay, that's fine. All right. 
And now, let me look at something. I'm going to just script the table. Drop and create to new creator window. I just want to make sure nothing is called table one in here. It is primary key. And this is going to be a idea. Okay. So we'll just hit execute. So sorry I did that. I had a feeling that saved the table and it created the primary key is why I came in here to drop and create the table like that. Okay, so now, no, I don't need to save that. Now we're ready to finish building our data tier. Sorry, I'm jumping around. I This wasn't really a planned video. I just decided to make it because I feel like not enough people know about data tier.net. I still think it's better than any framework, even though Microsoft has a few more employees than me. All right, and we'll go ahead and hit save. So now our database is ready, and we're gonna hit save. Now, if there were any tables or fields you wanted to exclude in a large database, you can uncheck them here before you build, but we're gonna use them all and build all. And now it's gonna prompt us for our data tier, which is, I go to Idea Bank where I created the project into the data folder. This is this this was all created via .NET new using NuGet. And it selects these three projects and we click update projects. And with one table it's going to be instant. If you have a large project that might take a while. And now we're going to execute these store procedures. And now I'll show you what we just, uh, here's the store procedures. For every table you get five, so there they are. <clears throat> and now I am going to go to, I'll show you what we just code generated. We're going to exclude this data folder from our project because it won't build if we don't. And what we're going to do is add a solution folder. Add new solution folder. Data add existing project and I'm going to go to the right folder idea bank data application logic component the nice thing is by the second one you start in the right folder and it's on my list trying to get this down to one project younger me uh, thought we needed four projects for this but maybe two uh, but that's later on I haven't got to that yet. I wanted to do it by .NET 7, but we're going for .NET 8 for that. Okay, and finally the object library. So now we have our four projects, and just to make sure everything we just did code generates, and it does. Okay, so now the next thing we need to do, I just wanted to show you really quickly the object library. You can get rid of these temporary classes. These are only here so the NuGet package compiles with the right namespaces once you uh, have some real data in here. And for each table you get a data class and the business class. The data class contains all the properties uh, in your table plus this is a read-only property. This says is new is false if the ID is uh, greater than zero. It'll return true if the ID is less than one. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. But okay, so now, and then the business class will not get overwritten. It only gets created if it doesn't already exist. So put any custom business logic in this class so there's really nothing in it, except for one method called clone. All right, and now we are ready to build out our form. So I'm gonna do a uh, couple little bit of modifications to our form. I'm going to call this main form. Hit close and save it because if you don't, it will. Uh, Visual Studio has some issues with the new. Oh, main form. Okay, there. All right. Just one, I just did that, but that seemed like deja vu. All right, so now I want the label, I mean the text to be uh, idea bank. And then finally, we're gonna add some project references. I forgot this part. We're gonna add a reference to everything except for the DAC. So skip the data access component. And now what we 
we want to do is we need to build a connection string for idea bank database and put that as an environment variable so we're going to use one of the programs that just got installed with datatier.net hopefully you think this is worth the price of free type in my server name again and there is a way to make this auto appear but I don't like to set it because I'll forget and check it into github okay and then next my database name is idea bank Windows authentication, leave all this as it is, test and copy. So now we have on our clipboard, we have our connection string, edit system environment variables, and we're going to add a user system environment variable, and we are going to call this uh, idea bank connection string and I'm going to paste that in and before I leave here I'm going to copy this and hit OK and now we're going to go over to our application I'm going to close datatear.net for just a second if we need it we can go back to it okay in the application logic component open up the connection folder open up the connection class and in the private variables and constants we're going to paste this right here so now anytime we create an instance of the gateway we just set connection.name and the app handles all the rest so you don't have to I'll show you how easy this is in just a second okay so now what we want to do is set up this form a little bit just wanted to get all that out of the way before we start and I will show you one more thing because this is kind of a tour also not just a, in the gateway class this is what the, the Windows form is going to talk to this class so for every uh, you get five methods plus some others but you get the uh, load save uh, find and delete and then there's a uh, yeah that's the four creds so basically and there's some other things here for the execute non-query if there's anything custom we're not going to get into that in this video I just wanted to show you what the gateway does and we'll get to that here in a second let's build out our form so we only got 17 minutes left so get the fun stuff out of the way I'm gonna set the font size to a font I can read well first we're gonna set auto scale mode to false none otherwise the form will grow when I increase the font so I'm going to change the font to Verdana and 12 so I can see all right now the background color I'll make this go fast and I'll just set this uh, set the back color to black just to make this a really quick video and then next what I want to do is we're going to add a NuGet package. I don't know what that little warning is, but we're, we're about those later. Here is the uh, NuGet packages that got installed when we created the project over here. But now we need to add a new one, datajuggler.win.controls. And it only goes in the Windows Form project. All right and we'll just this is on my list to get rid of this in the template that's just something we do it's just a warning we don't need that all right so we can close all that okay so now if you come over here to the toolbox after you add data juggler dot win dot controls you get a label uh, text box control is the first one we're going to want this is going to be well this is for the editor what we're going to do first is create a list box so let's just get the windows uh, we'll just use a list box okay and this is going to be our list of ideas 
And let me get a label. Put the label here. I'm going to have to change a couple of things. We'll call this uh, list box label or something. List label. And the text is going to be ideas. The four color is why we can't see it. I'm going to use lemon chiffon. And I know how to spell that because I've typed it 100 or 200 times by now. And I'm going to kind of place it right there. I really don't like that being uh, auto size, but I'm going to let me copy the size so that when I change it to auto size, false. I'm going to put the size right back. I just don't really like that auto size stuff. Okay. We're good there. I'm going to call the list box ideas list. Alright. And now we need, I'm going to make it a little bit wider because your titles. Um, I'm going to make this form just bigger over here. And it is kind of storming outside. I don't know if you'll hear the rain, but I sure do. It's coming down pretty good. We need the rain though, so. And I'll make this a little bigger. We're not paying for real estate here. Okay, and now we just need some buttons. So, part of datajuggler.win.controls is a button. We're going to change the theme of the button from go to dark, kind of matches our form a little better. This is going to be the add button. Change the button text, add, and I'm going to make it a little smaller. Let's go with like 96 is probably good. Alright, and I'm going to create two more buttons. That takes a long time to copy one button. Okay, and now I want to say format horizontal spacing make equal. Okay, I might move these two in a little bit. Uh, they don't need to be way over there. Looks kind of weird. Okay. Now we'll try that one more time. Oops. <clears throat> I just made a copy. Whoa. That was weird. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me get a drink. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Trying one more time. These got really big on me again. I don't know how. Format. Uh, make same size both. Okay, and now we'll put this in the center. Format align centers, and then pull that in. And now we'll just say make equal. Okay, so we're down to 11 minutes, but maybe we can pull this off, we'll see. Okay, so this is the add button, this is the edit button. Change the button text. And this is the delete button. And button text. Okay. Now we're going to add some events. Add. We need to click a button. Edit. And delete. And now I'm going to show you another package and I'll put the link to the in the video description if you want to install this and I'll put some instructions but I'm going to format the document just to kind of put the events in the events region and a bunch of other things and it forces me to this class is the main form for this okay so now it's also got an auto commenter and if I hit control shift that gets typed we're ready to do the add, edit, and delete, but before we do that, I'm going to come over here, and I am going to add 
a panel extender. And what that is, it's like a regular panel, but <clears throat> the advantage is it's got some, you can double buffer it and it doesn't flicker like a, a regular panel if you have a graphics intensive app. Shouldn't matter for this one though. Okay, so now I just, this way I can hide everything really easily in this uh, panel. And this is going to be our edit, and this is only going to show up whenever you are. Uh, we'll dock this to the right, actually, just to make it dock right. Okay, and we're going to call this uh, edit panel. And then our this need this is going to be the title control. It's not really big enough to be our title control, so we might need to still make our form. I could have done this another form to pop up, but I didn't really think we need it for this simple little app. All right, and okay. And we'll make this wider. All right, and now we need to get the label color. This is a label text box control, by the way. It's just a label in a text box. We need to give it some text and the label text. This is gonna be title. Okay, and we're gonna make the, uh, the width the label width a little smaller. Okay, and then next we need just the ID itself. Give you a little space there. And this is gonna be the ID text box. The label text here is ID. And this is going to be, I'm going to put it up here because this is going to be multi-line. Let me find that, change that to true. And now I can pull this down. Okay, so now we have our idea text box. The only thing we, now I started working on a calendar control. I just haven't got it finished. So. For the date, we're just going to use another one of these label text box for our date, just to be simple with text, because we're running out of time here, but we'll see how far we get. Okay, this is going to be the uh, created date control, and this is only going to be enabled well, it's actually going to be not editable. Change that to false. So this is going to be, when you click the add button, this gets set. Okay. And now we just need two more buttons for save and cancel. And that is all we are going to need. And then make these buttons work and everything's good in six minutes. Maybe. I don't build rockets though. Good. I wouldn't want to be on a plane and I had six minutes to finish the landing gear. I'd go ahead and bet against us, but we'll see. All right, save button. Got a click event for that. I'm gonna select my little save button here. Say regionizer format selection. And we're gonna move these over to kind of line up. And go back over here and do the delete button the same way delete button oh this is the save button I didn't change the text to save sorry it's kinda late alright so now this is the cancel in case you change your mind and we'll call that cancel save because I don't have to bother adding new because there's a built-in cancel. All right, and this is going to be uh, button text of cancel. Okay, so it's about to get interesting. I could have built the form out, but I was trying to show you anybody that might be interested in this control set 
how to use it because I think it's it's my first NuGet package so I'm still they say you always remember your first I don't know what they're talking about but I think it's this okay so we are now ready to before anything happens with our buttons I want to kind of scoot this over a little and scoot this over I'm just gonna go a little bit I don't not even gonna be perfect but that was gonna bug me if I didn't do that all right so we want to load our list at the very beginning now there's nothing to see because we haven't got anything but before we load our list though there's one thing we got to do in the object library we need to add a two string method in the business here because we don't want to lose our little method we're gonna add public override to string and that's gonna mess up our formatting but I'll show you how to fix that we're gonna return a title whenever to string gets called return the title okay and now I'm gonna select this use regionizer format selection okay so now we are ready this way when we add items to the list box you don't see uh, idea dot you know it'll be like the name of object library dot business dot id instead of that you'll see the title which is what we want so now we're going to load our you finally get to see the database in action after all this work but so we're going to add an init method so i need that keeps getting formatted over i don't know how or everything okay just to minimize our little events region and we're going to add a methods region I'm a regionaholic except for I don't go to meetings that's for quitters okay we're going to add a method the method is going to be called init and it's a void so I'm going to change that to event and write back and I didn't have to type anything and it types that for me come over here hit init and I'm gonna hit control shift if anybody wants to know how this works let me know and I'll make a video about it alright so now we're gonna just set up we want to load our list so we need to create a list here list idea oh, we need to add a reference two references three okay so now we have our references we can just add a list of ideas using regionizer I'm gonna hit create I don't have a properties region and we're gonna do one more thing real quick we're gonna create nullable equals false because Microsoft wants to make all our lives miserable with this new stuff they added so nullable disabled because I don't like that okay that's another story there so back here on our properties region we need uh, and I know our time is about to run out but I'm gonna keep going I was a little over ambitious alright so now I'll try this one more time create properties if there was more here this would be an alphabetical order but actually it already is an alphabetical order a list of one is still sorted all right and now we're gonna say create has property that's just an easy way to test for null all right so now what we're gonna do we are going to load our uh, list of ideas so here first we're gonna create an instance of a gateway and this is where we say connection.name that I showed you earlier. I'm going to hit control shift and that types that comment for me. And I'm now going to say uh, idea list. What did I call it? Ideas equal gateway.load ideas. Now this will load all, all ideas. You might want to you know sort it, but we'll do that. That's another video. We're trying just to finish here okay so now we're just gonna say load the ideas and we're gonna display so you have officially 
connected to the database, but there's nothing in it yet, so we're going to have to add it. So if you want to stick around, probably 10 or 15 more minutes is my guess, because I've got to go to bed soon. I don't really have to. I don't have anything to do tomorrow. But All right, so now what we're going to do is display ideas. So I'll just call this a failure. I'll close our little program. Sorry. Do 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 do. Okay. So now we're going to add a method called display ideas. Didn't have to do it in a method, but I'm just going to. If list helper. Let me show you what we need to do here. Add one more reference. Data juggler dot ultimate helper comes with all of my projects and I'm now gonna say if list helper that has one or more items ideas hit control shift and it types that comment for me and now I'm gonna just do a for each idea in ideas I'm going to hit control shift, type the comment for me, and I want to do one thing at the beginning. Ideas list box dot items dot clear. Just in case we do this more than once, in case it, when it gets called again. So we don't add duplicates. All right, and now we're just going to say ideas list box dot items dot add this is the part I was talking about we added the two string for okay so I don't have an auto comment for that add this item okay one thing I want to do is turn off sorted I think it's probably sorted by okay good it's false okay now we need an event for the selected index changed so go to somewhere here. There it is. Selected index changed. I'm going to select this right here and say format selection. And I'm having weird formatting events. This never used to happen until Visual Studio started messing up. But OK, sorry. All right, so now we have our selected index, but we want to store an object for that. So selected idea, we'll create properties, son of a bitch. Sorry, this is just driving me nuts, this formatting that they keep changing on me. All right, so selected idea, create has property. All right. So now, what we want to add is a method, and this method is going to be called UI enable. And what this is going to be is, I swear, this something is moving this stuff back over. There's like some kind of formatting that I've got all the formatting turned off, and it does that. All right. Okay, this is going to be if has a selected idea, we're going to say panel, what is this panel called? Edit panel, okay. Has selected idea. Enable if selected. And now we can go to our selected index changed. Uh, selected idea equals ideas list box dot selected item as idea. And we're going to call UI control. Oops. UI enable. I'm going to hit control shift and that types that comment. And now what we want to do is a display the selected idea. So what we're going to do for that, 
I'm going to come down here and do it in the property. And we're going to add a method. Display selected idea. All right. And with that, we're going to just set all our values. It's going to be, and it's going to be create value. So it's going to be string title. Then we're going to have string description. And then it's going to be a string date, because we're just going to get it as a date. And then if has selected idea, control shift to type my comment. Now this is going to be set all our values. I meant to do that in here. Display values. So here we're just going to say title equals selected idea dot title description selected idea dot description and date equals selected idea dot to uh, dot created date dot to short date straight that's fine now title control dot text equals title description and it's actually a description text box what did I call this idea text box so that's really the description but okay idea text box and then oops down here sorry uh, idea text box dot text equals description you tell I'm getting sleepy and then created date control dot text equals date and that is not editable okay so that should give us our selected item displayed I'm gonna cross out 30 minutes and make it one hour on the video cover but hey I tried okay so now we're ready to actually add one which is the we can't display anything till we add and but I'll, I'll show you save in case you're uh, seeing how that's gonna work so that's gonna be go to click all right if has selected idea control shift to type that what we're going to do is we want to capture the control values so that's just going to be selected idea dot title equals title control dot text uh, selected idea dot I description equals idea text box dot text and then created date control uh, selected idea dot created date equals we'll just say date helper dot parse date and that's part of ultimate helper and we're going to use the created date control dot text default date is just gonna be date time dot min value same with that okay so all we want to do that was just a way to parse the date really is I could have stored it a different way because we already it's really just now but I'll do it when you click the add button 
and then now we're ready to save. So saving is real simple. You just say gateway, gateway equals new gateway, connection.name. Bull saved equals gateway dot save idea ref and it's going to be selected idea and you got to use the lowercase version because the uh, you can't pass a public property by uh, ref perform the save I'm going to show you this if you ever need to debug something if not saved and this is my biggest advantage of datatear.net over Entity Framework to me. So I've had Entity Framework just hide the error but just not save you know, more times than I can count. But with this you just say exception error equals gateway dot get last exception. And it'll tell you the problem. Okay, so get the last error. And I'm not going to show you. You can debug that. It'll usually tell you, you know, what's missing or constraints missing or something. But okay. So now that was the save we want to. Now what we want to do is display. The, I know I'm kind of going. We're ahead of the cart. We still haven't saved our first one, but I'm just writing this method because I know what it's going to need. Now we want to display the list again because we just did a save. So we're going to say display ideas and I'm going to modify that some because we need to select the uh, so what we want to do is selected index equals and We'll come down here. Selected index equals list helper dot find. I don't have that here. Okay. We'll just do it up here. I'll add one more. What I'm doing right now is I want to select the selected item in the list anytime you uh, do a reload the list. Because I forgot to do that. If idea.title equals, uh, well, of course we need if has selected idea. And selected idea dot title. I wanted that to be that. I'll actually use this. And text helper dot is equal idea dot title selected idea dot title. And I could have gone by ID, that's probably actually better. I don't know why I didn't. Okay. ID equals selected idea dot ID. Okay. If this is the selected item, selected index equals index. And then we'll come down here. And say ideas list box selected index equals selected index. Okay. Select the selected item. Okay, sorry I forgot that part. So that was kind of a. Alright. Now there's one more thing I want to do in add. Okay. We're actually going to build out add now. Well, we need one more variable. I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead again, but we're going to go with private bool edit mode equals false. Okay. What? Oh, I didn't mean to put equals false there. Sorry, that was. 
a limitation of regionizer. Okay, sorry about that. Ta da! Okay, so now what we want to do is in our little UI enable method, uh, has selected idea and edit mode. So that way we really don't need that doubled. Okay. So that way, the it's only enabled while you're editing, which is like an add new. So we'll say we could have even broke that out, but I don't feel like creating an operation. So back in our little add button, we're ready to actually add. Uh, selected idea equals new idea. And now that will automatically display and we want to say edit mode equals true. Uh, it's not a property. And finally we're going to say title control dot set focus to the text box when we go into edit mode. Okay, so everybody still watching is eligible for the million dollar drawing. Let me know in the comments. Just kidding, but I don't think anybody ever makes it this far, but we'll see. All right. All right. So I think that part looks good. We want to set the created date. Selected idea. Dot create a date equals date time dot now. That way it'll display the date. Actually, yeah, we're gonna have to recall display selected ID after the date is set. So our little setting it here in the property was probably not needed, but oh well. All right, so now we have that. And I think we're good there. The only thing else we need is in cancel. We need our cancel event. Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and just format the whole document because that bothers me the way the formatting is acting. Okay, so in our little cancel button, what we're going to do again is say, notice all the events are in alphabetical order, which to me makes it easier to find, especially on really large files. All right, so now this is going to be slightly different. Oh, cancel is just going to be edit mode equals false. Okay, and I'll just put. Uh, Cancel editing. And that'll just get rid of uh, in case we decide not to add one. And we need to do edit first. So we'll do if has yeah, just type control shift. Right, now I'm going to say uh, edit mode equals true. There's really not need. I could have uh, even made add and edit call the same method. Alright, set edit mode to true. And now I'm going to do the same thing. Say title control dot set focus to text box. Okay. Enter edit mode in the text box. All right, so I think we're all good except for the delete method. And I'm sure there's a lot I'm missing, but I'm just trying to write all this, and then we'll go see if it works. That's kind of the way I like to. I don't build rockets, so. All right, so now we're gonna say if has selected idea. 
once again gateway new gateway connection dot name gonna say gateway dot delete idea and it's gonna be selected idea dot ID perform the delete and now display ideas we're gonna say selected idea equals no destroy that was a control shift and then display the ideas and there's nothing to be selected it'll just redisplay our list so that's pretty easy for deleting all right and let's see if it works what do you think if you're here an hour into it Okay, well there's nothing in our list. Now, I just realized we called our date title, so I'm going to fix that before we test. Just going to change the label text to uh, date. Okay, sorry about that. All right, let's see if the ad actually, now first this should be, hmm, I want to make that disabled at the beginning. So, in fact, we're going to make the uh, little panel invisible until you have a selected item. So we'll go to our little UI enable method. Edit panel dot visible equals has selected ID only show if selected alright so we'll try that again okay let's go to our init method this needs to call Okay, now did not work, so we're gonna go see why. So let's go to our add button. Okay, we need to because you can't set focus to something that's not visible. Well, you can, but nothing will happen. Okay, now we're going to save to our first save. The date worked, that's a good sign. And we'll just call this idea uh, create video to demo data chair.net in 30 minutes. Idea. Sure, you can create a full app in 30 minutes and hit save okay that did not work so we're gonna go see well first we're gonna go look in SQL and just make sure it didn't work close this down select star from idea it did work so I know what we didn't do we need to reload our list after we saved we didn't do that so we're gonna go back to our save our add button I mean our save event Ta -da. okay I just realized I have if not saved, but I need to put an else. And I could write that differently. I'll just say I'll put it this way. 
Because hopefully it should work as this. So we're going to call load. What did I do at the very beginning? Oh, that's in the init method, isn't it? Really put this in the. Just trying to think where the. This really needs to be a method. Alright. I'll just move it back over. Visual Studio is just out to get me. Alright, so with load ideas, paste in our little code, and now, okay, just so I can call this separately. And now back in our save event, reload the ideas. And now we want to, we already have display right here. Okay, that should uh, take care of us. So let's run it again. Okay, so we have our first one up. Okay, it did not work, so we're going to go see why our display did not work. And then we're almost done. Once I get the edit working, uh, we're going to be done. All right. So let's go figure out why our selected index changed method. Where's that? Ah, I know what we didn't do. Display. Let me go. Hang on. Let me go set this. Select that idea. Ah, here's what I didn't do. Display selected idea. Okay update the UI. So that way if we get a new one that should work. Okay. It's you're not in edit mode, so you can't nothing's editable. Let's see what happens. Okay. Edit did not work. So let's go into edit mode. Event Edit mode equals true. Ah, computers are so picky. They only do what you tell it. Okay, now let's try edit one more time. Okay, and now we're going to say still not bad. An entire app in a little over an hour. Save. Okay. Um, I know what we didn't do. We need to exit edit mode when save is called. I think we're doing that, but we're not calling UI enable. Let me go see. If save... Okay. <clears throat> After save, we need to say edit mode equals false and UI enable. Okay. See how that works. Okay. Or at least our edit saved. And now we'll tab down into there and say third attempt everything works. Alright, now we're going to add one more. Clears everything out. Really, we should kind of disable this while you're over here, but that's another video. And we're going to go ahead and just say uh, end of the video and ask anyone still here to subscribe. It might happen. Hit save. Okay, and now I'm going to show you the delete. Now, if this was anything critical, you'd probably want to put a confirmation before you delete, but I'm going to go ahead and just do it. And our delete didn't work, or we're going to see if it worked. Let's run this again. 
Okay, our delete worked, our update didn't work. And there's one more thing I'm gonna do. This will, this will bother me, so sorry, it takes 30 more seconds, but I didn't ever set the startup position. And that should be center screen. That should be the default to me. I don't know why. I've thought that for 20 years though, so it's not nothing, it's just a, my ideas don't go away. All right, Microsoft doesn't care what I think is what I meant to say. All right, so now we in our delete event, we got to do a little more apparently. If we have a selected ID, if deleted, ah. Uh, that needs to be, just trying to think. Huh. Why didn't that? Oh, we need to reload the ID. That's why that didn't work. I, 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 normally I create like a load in display in one method. I broke those out for this video, but I should have done it. Okay. That'll work. And that'll be the end of the video just to show you it works. So we got to add one more just to. All right. End of video. It's time, I'm sure everybody watching goes, yes, and this stupid thing. Okay, and now we're going to add one more. This, this is going to be called to be deleted. This is the one to delete. Save. And now we'll hit delete. Drum roll. It works. Okay, so that was my uh, one hour and six minute, 30 minute video. Let me know what you think. Do you think it's worth the price of free? And what do you think of it compared to Entity Framework? All right, thanks for watching.